ですか。
estimate of giving. So if you are hesitant about pledging, it's really an estimate. And if you can't follow through because of some problem later on and whatever, we won't kill you. So don't worry if you can't finish your pledge. But uh, today I have some. If you can't fill it out, I gave out some already. Put it in the uh, uh, collection plate or I'll see me afterward. Okay, we have about, let's see now, 60 something. We got some, about 70 out of the 125 we were hoping to get. But don't be afraid to give an estimate of giving. We won't hold a gun to your head if you can't make it, but just give it some thought. Thank you. You're going to hear first, folks, we will not kill you. Right. <laughs> All right, and Charles Jansen, I'd like Charles Jansen about the retreat. Everything's pretty much covered in the bulletin, but today is the last day to sign up for the retreat. There's very limited space, so if you want to come, you should see me immediately after service. Those that signed up um, should see me after the service to make payment arrangements. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Does anyone else have announcements to come before the congregation this morning? Seeing that, I'll call upon you for the uh, call of worship. <coughs> For those that are able, please stand for the call to worship. I waited patiently for God, who turned to me and heard my cry, who lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, and set my feet on a rock, and gave me a firm place to stand. We sing a new song. Our mouths are full of the grace of God. Blessed are we when we make the Lord our trust when we do not turn aside to false gods. We sing of all your many wonders of God, who remains to declare them all. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but our ears you have pierced and a body you have prepared for us. We sing, here I am, I have come, desire to do your will.
Tell us who you are. My name is Carol Peck. I just moved to Strongsville in October, and I'm shopping for a better contact with Christ. Well, we can give you a good deal. <laughs> we give you 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> we won't even kill you if you don't want to the whole. Uh, and the other first time visit is the well, we're uh, glad you're here with us this morning. Welcome. Uh, Joyce this morning. Who's got a joy? <coughs> My daughter Thomas, I'm having her back surgery. Your daughter's home ha after having back surgery and doing well. The sunshine. The sunshine. It's a rarity, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Other joys? Other joys, yes. Yeah. I'm going to be a great grandmother again. You're going to be a great grandmother again. All right, when? Uh, July. July. Awesome. <laughs> Other joys yet? My birthday's on Tuesday. Your birthday's on Tuesday. How old are you going to be? Ten. 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 Have you picked out a car yet? <laughs> <laughs> Other joys yet? On Tuesday, it's also ten of my 13th wedding anniversary. Third, is it your ninth wedding anniversary? Oh. <laughs> Thirteenth wedding anniversary. Okay. All right. Other joys? My niece had a baby six weeks uh, premature, but it's doing very well. I bet her niece had a baby six weeks premature, but it's doing well. Praise the Lord. Do you know the name? Yes, Nicholas. Nicholas. Nicholas and our family. All right. Others? Other joys? How about the uh, friends we need to, before I do friends we, in our prayers, you know, there are some spots in our church that need to be to, Build some positions that need to be worked on. Uh, Diane's up in the uh, in the loft, and she's kind of leading the uh, nominating committee. Correct? For the diaconate. Yeah. For the diaconate. If you're interested in serving on the diaconate, they're the ones that kind of help take care of the altar and decorate the church and do lots of other things. Uh, it's a really good thing to be a, a part of. Uh, I'd like to encourage you, especially some of those who have taken the membership class recently and aren't on a, in a position yet, to uh, consider taking the diaconate. Others? Others? Yeah. 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 Friend's mother who's uh, recovering from a heart condition is in intensive care. Uh, the close a family, the close friend of my Bill, who passed away this last week. For Bill, his family who passed away for him. Um, I'd like to pray for a speedy healing for Pam Keenan, who had foot surgery a couple weeks back. Really miss our Pam Keenan. And also for Steve Herzog, who continues to struggle with his recovery. For Steve Herzog, who is, uh, is struggling, and for Pam Keenan, who uh, needs to be re is recovering yet. My mom, Dorothy, Archie, um, who's just not feeling good. And uh, Jim Mueller, who lost his wife, Patty Lavery, this week. Um, their both families are long-time strong as well presidents. For Jim Mueller, who lost his wife, Patty, and for your mom, who is not just feeling under the weather. Others? Yes. Rebecca Alto is sick. She has pneumonia, so she prayed first. All right. Others? Yes. Got everybody great. Betty Craig, who's still recovering from pneumonia. Yes. Are those who are pressured by the military in the planes? Those who were killed in the plane crash? Is that what you were saying? No, those who are pressured by the I'm sorry. Well, I wasn't aware of that. Yes. Yes, for God and Jesus. Others? Yes. For our neighbor, he went in for a foot surgery, and they found out he has heart condition. So he's going to have to wait till Monday here. They're going to have that amputated his foot, but they have to work on the heart first. Our neighbor who went in for foot surgery, go pan out. The bad that he has a heart condition, has to wait, get that under control, but then they're going to have to amputate his foot. 
Others? Yeah. Uh, my son and daughter-in-law of a woman I worked with had a stillborn baby. Oh. Her son and daughter-in-law of a woman she worked with had a stillborn. Not for my girlfriend, Natisha. She's not due till March, but um, the rate the baby is growing, she could deliver at any day. And the last time that happened, the baby was born. Came for Natisha and her birth experience. Others? Yeah. Yeah. For our countries, we go through the transfer of power. Others? Yeah. My brother Ralph, who's chemo, has not been helping, so he started more aggressive, stronger. For your brother, whose chemo did not has not gone well, and they're going to start a more aggressive form. <coughs> Others? So let's take it to the Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you've given us. Lord, it's a, a wintry day. It's cold and sometimes gloomy outside. But even in the midst of the gloom, we know that you are present with us. Lord, we ask that you would please be with those whose names have been mentioned. For those who are ill, for those who are trying to recover, Lord, we ask that you would strengthen them. For those who have lost loved ones, Lord, we ask for your assurance for them that things are okay. And Lord, help us to continue to keep focused on you, trusting in you, and doing the things that you want us to do, not wavering in our, our love of you and our insistence upon your grace for all people. <coughs> Lord, bless us, bless this transition of power in our country, and Lord, uh, help us to weather the storms of life as they continue to rage upon us. Lord, hear us as we all join in the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day.
time for the children's message. Come on down. Amen. Time for the children's message. Call no kiddos. Come on down. Come on. Here comes Riley Roo. I bet it out. Ah. You know, I gotta tell you a story. One time, when I was just little, and I used to ride my bike all over the place. Did you ride your bike all over the place? You know, when I was little, we used to be able to ride our bikes throughout the community, and we would ride them all over the place. And, and there was never any problem, so we would all get together and ride. And sometimes there would be three or four of us that would ride together. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like a little group <coughs> that would ride together. Well, one day we came to this one place, and it was a big, long hill that went down. And I was at the top of the hill. And somebody said, I dare you to ride down that hill on your bike without having your hands on this <laughs> And I went, no way, no way. And they said, chicken, chicken. They used to use a phrase, I double dog dare you. Have you ever heard that phrase, I double dog dare you? Ever? Has anybody ever double dog dared you to do something? Yeah? <laughs> no? Well, guess what I did? I went down the hill without having my hands on the handlebars. And before I got to the bottom of that hill, the bike hit a <coughs> limb that was in the bottom of the hill and over I went down the hill I scraped up all my both my arms and my knees and my face because somebody said I double dog dare you you know what happened when I got home all bloody and my father and mother were there they asked me, what the heck did you do? Well, I told them. And I, they said, well, why did you do that? I said, because somebody double dog dared me. And my father said, if somebody told you to jump off a cliff, would you do it? If they dared you to jump off a cliff, would you do it? No. No. What happened that day to me? What do you think happened? Huh? I did what other people. I gave in to temptation. Somebody tempted me. Somebody challenged me to do something stupid. And like probably you will someday, you did something stupid. <laughs> Have you ever done something stupid like that? Anybody? Let's be honest. Have you ever done something stupid like that? Yeah. yeah. Good. Don't. Don't. Sometimes we're tempted to do things that we know aren't good. You know, or wrong. And we must not give in to those temptations. You know, it could be something like this, like a double dog dare. It could be the way we treat other people. Or going along with the crowd, you know? Because I want to be in the end group, especially girls. Because, you know, we want to be with everybody, and we want to be in the end group, and if they are mean to somebody else, we get mean to them too, because everybody else does. Don't do that. That's wrong. <laughs> Don't be tempted. And you know it's you're being tempted, if the one thing it says to you, first thing is you go, this is really stupid to do. And the other thing is if you feel in your heart that it's not right. If it's not right, don't do it, right? All right, so don't 
let yourselves be tempted. Because that's the way evil tries to get us to do things that aren't what God wants us to do. So maybe you could do that old thing. They used to have bands on it. used to say, WWJD. <coughs> what did that mean, WWJD? Anybody know? Yes. Not worldwide Jesus domination, no. But that's close. It would ask us the question is, what would Jesus do? So ask yourself, in those times when you're being tempted, what would Jesus do? If I didn't ask myself that question, I'd probably be falling off the bike going down the hill. Right? All right. So don't let yourself be tempted by things of this world. But ask yourself, what would Jesus do? <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. Bless us this day. And help us to do the things that are right and not to be tempted. And when the temptation comes to us, let us say, get behind me, Satan! And not be tempted to do things that are bad. Amen. See you guys later. Oh, you got your offering in books. Take them to Sunday school with you. <coughs> At this time, we'd like to wait on you for an offering. And just to show that we're giving you a deal on being a member of the church today, don't put anything in a plate. This is our treat for you, really. No first-time visitor puts anything in the plate. We're just thankful that you're here with us. That's our tradition. Now, the rest of us... We give out a love for what God has given us. If not, Linda will come and visit you.
accept these gifts that we humbly give. Use them for your holy purpose, Lord. Bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of the living Christ, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Today's reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. Blessed be this reading of the word, Lord. Thanks be to God. Today you heard me begin by talking to the children this morning about being tempted. Being tempted. That's the essence of the scripture today. Jesus, after being baptized by John, he gets up and he goes out into the wilderness where he eats nothing for 40 days. For 40 days. And in that course of the 40 days after the fasting has happened, he is tempted by <coughs> Satan three times. In the first temptation, he is Satan comes to him and sees that he's famished, that he's hungry, and he, he hasn't had anything to eat. And Satan says to him, Surely you're the Son of God. Make these stones into bread, that you may have something to eat. <coughs> and Jesus sees this temptation to turn and says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Satan leaves, and then Satan comes back again. And he takes Jesus, and he sends him to the, to the top of the mountain. And at the top of the mountain, Satan shows him all the kingdoms of the world. All the power, all the riches, all the glories. And he says, hey, Jesus, this can all be yours if you just bow to me. You can have it all if you just bow to me. And Jesus says, you shall worship no other God but your God. Satan then takes him to the pinnacle of the temple. It's important because the temple is the center of the religious faith, right? He takes him all the way up to the pinnacle of the temple, to the top of the steeple, if you will, of the highest church, and he says to him, throw yourself down from here. For it is written in God's word that, you're, that the angels will not even let you Bump your foot against the stone. And Jesus says to him, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And after those three temptations, Satan leaves Jesus. And Jesus is then ministered to by the angels who feed him. And he begins his ministry. Satan is thrown at best at him, but not able to touch him. Sometimes we're all tempted, aren't we? We're all tempted to do things, and to grab things, and to act in ways that aren't appropriate for the people of God to act. Recently, I've been going back and rereading some of the old books I used to read when I was a youngster in, in seminary. And again, I, I, I've talked to you that I've been rereading this book by Dietrich Bonhoeffer called, you know, the, the, his time in prison, Letters from Prison. And Dietrich in his time, Dietrich is, he's, he's in the time of the German rise of power. In the 1930s and 40s, and Dietrich Bonhoeffer is a 
the Protestant minister. And he speaks out against what Germany is doing. And because he speaks out, he is thrown into prison and left to rot in prison. Kind of like <coughs> Satan here, his family says to him, hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you just call it? This will all pass. Things will be all easy. Don't make so much ruffles. Don't make any waves. Just, just go with the flow. It's easy to go with the flow, isn't it? How many people in Germany went with the flow? How many people in our country go with the flow? Because if everybody else is doing it, it's got to be okay. You know? Got to be. He talks about some of the ways of temptation. And one of the things he talks about is this, this imperative that we, that we not give in to what the flow is, but to hold fast to what Christ is calling us to be and to do. And one of the things that Christ calls us to do is to do justice. Do justice. <coughs> Just a couple days ago, Jack took me to a movie. I let him buy. <laughs> Even buy popcorn, Marty. I know. Temptation. I got my temptations. <laughs> and in the course of the movie, it was a movie called Hidden Figures. I don't know if anybody's seen the movie Hidden Figures yet or not. It's about, it's about the space program in NASA. And it's about the contribution of African American women to the space program. And you know what? I knew nothing about that. It had been hidden from me. And here in this movie, we find out that there are a group of women who do all the statistical stuff, and, and, and they call them the computers, the black women computers. And they're in a separate section, and, and they're treated unfairly, and, and a couple of them, one of them gets a break. She has the job of doing all the high-powered calculations to get John Glenn into space. The first man to circumnavigate the earth. But because she's black, she has to put up with all the nonsense of the discrimination, including not having a bathroom that she can go in and the building feeds in. She has to walk 40 minutes away to a bathroom that says colored only. Colored only. Or in her office, there's a coffee pot for everybody in the office. She has to have a little one, especially with marked with a tag that says colored only. And everybody in the office goes along with it. Because <coughs> it was the way things work. And a colored only drinking fountain. And being a colored woman, she had it even worse because women weren't even allowed to be involved in this. And yet she was the smartest one of all. You know what? She eventually won the, the I think it was the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her contributions. Because we went along with flow. We we said, it's okay to treat other people poorly. It's not okay. <clears throat> you know, when I was a kid, not only did I get tempted to do stupid stuff, you didn't do stupid stuff when you were a kid, did you? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and he never did <laughs> stuff when he was a kid either, did you, Eddie? <laughs> but somehow we were always taught like this too. Hey, if a bully smacks you, hit him back. Right? Somebody does you dirty, do it back to them, right? Isn't that what we were taught? But the one who defeated the evil person, what did he say? Turn the other cheek, didn't he? If someone smacked you on the right side, <laughs> and that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Turn the other cheek. It ain't easy. Somebody says something about you. You don't come back and say something else about them. If you're online, and somebody says to you online, you know, says something about, you know, I don't like Pastor Becky because she's so and so and so and so. It doesn't, it's not right for me to come back online and say, I think so and so is stupid because they don't do so and so. We all have our temptations. And those temptations are those things that sometimes separate us from God. Because it's not the personification of Satan as an individual. Evil is what separates us in, the, in our hearts from God. Because we know it's not God's way. It's, we know it's something we aren't supposed to be doing. And sometimes it can be something really big. It can be really big like stealing or lying or... But oftentimes, they're not the ones that drive me the craziest the most. The ones that drive me the craziest the most are the little things. You know? And oftentimes, when we give in to the temptations, we know it because we feel terrible about what we've done. Yes? Yes? You know what I'm saying? You get that feeling? And sometimes it's, sometimes what's a temptation for me and giving in to what I shouldn't do isn't the same thing as a temptation for you and what you're, you give in. For instance, I am not supposed to eat a large amount of food. You know, I'm supposed to stay the heck away from carbs. Every Sunday, I get here early, and I go down, and I make the coffee, and I unwrap the pastries. <laughs> and I start out by saying, I'm not going to be really too bad. I'll pick off a nut. Or two. <laughs> and you all have seen me do this, right? Yes. You know I'm bad at this. I pick a nut off of the pastry. And before long, I, before I'll, I, I want to make my guilt feel bad. So what I'll do is I'll take a cookie or a pastry and I'll break it in half and I'll give you half and I'll give you half. I do that a lot, don't I? Because I don't feel so bad if it's only half a pastry. I'm only cheating a little bit. But then later in the day, I go, man, I wish I hadn't done that. <coughs> For a couple of reasons. One is, I don't feel what I am. And the other is, I get so mad because I've let myself down. Somehow I've given in to that temptation. And I feel bad about myself for doing that. Jesus could have made the stones to bread and said, you know, I'm a human being, I need to eat. He, he could have accepted Satan's temptation to have everything and said, look, I'm just a human being. Because 
you know, when we give in to temptations, we always make excuses, right? Either, uh, either it's okay, everybody else is doing it, or, or somebody dared me, or, or, or <coughs> it's only half a cookie, <laughs> it's only half bad. Thank you, James. <laughs> there are always excuses. He could have thrown himself off the top of the temple because God absolutely said, you shall not bury your hit your foot against the stone. Could have done that. But he chose not to. He chose to resist the temptations. Now, be aware that when you resist the temptations, when, when you do what when you do what God wants you to do, and you go against the flood, there is a reward in the kingdom of heaven. But most of the time, there's a price to pay on earth. Well, let me say that again. When you go against the flip of humanity or of humanness, and you do what God wants you to do, there is a reward in the kingdom of heaven, but a price to pay on earth. Dietrich Bonhoeffer would not give in to the atrocities and go with the flow of how people were being treated in Nazi Germany. And he died in prison. Martin Luther King, whose, birth, whose birthday we're celebrating tomorrow, decided to stand up against the atrocities of prejudice and racism. And he was shot and killed. Jesus would not give in, not give in to the, to the, to the way the Pharisees and Sadducees were doing stuff in his own time and chose to live and show us how to live a grace-filled life in God. And they hung him on a cross. You might say that's all in the prayer, but it's not. The future is yet to unfold. And we, we, may be called at a time to make a decision of whether we will give in to the temptations or whether we'll stand with God and God's teaching. You might give in to the temptation and you might make it through this life song that we just sang, Here I Am, Lord. <coughs> Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. It's just not just the people who are in the flow. It's all of God's people. And so we must avoid the temptation of just being like everybody else, of just going with the flow. <coughs> we must seek to do what God wants us to do. Friends, I, I don't know what the future holds for all of us. But somehow I have this feeling that we are going to be called 
to stand with the poor and the oppressed, the needy, those who are mistreated, those who are abused, and make our voices known like Obama and King and Jesus, and not give in to temptation, but help deliver our brothers and sisters from evil. For God is the kingdom now and forever. Amen. Would you turn, please, to our closing hymn, Holy and Holy. We sing number one, three, and five. One, three, and five.